Fellow enthusiasts of the Vroom Vroom, this video is proudly brought to you by Gum Out. Cut it here and meet that angle up at the top. So just kind of give this a little bit of a slant, okay? This is a little not as nice and straight as that is. The amount of Bondo on here might expose that it all looks like this. However, we can work with this piece. So that bump right there is pretty bad and there's a high point right there. We're just gonna get rid of all that real quick and then we can uh, chop chop. If you watched the last video, you'll remember I used this tape method to create the floors and the transmission tunnel in this truck. Uh, it has become my new favorite way of doing this. Cardboard is great, but it's kind of hard because you don't really know where the lines need to be when you go to cut it. So there's a little bit of guesswork. Whereas with the tape, you can feel the lines or you can see them better. You can literally just trace over the exact shape that you want. As a man, there are a few things in this world I enjoy more than watching sparks fly while metal is being cut. So I was sure to include plenty of that for you guys here in this sequence. We're cutting a little bit of support off the bottom of the bed so that the tailgate has the clearance it needs to swing back. So we're gonna see what all is involved in that. Train of thought here was pretty simple. I didn't want to put all this together, and if it turned out exactly how we wanted it on the first shot, it would have sucked a lot. If there was still paint in all the corners, it would have made it a lot more difficult to strip. So that's why we're going in town right now. The back side of this thing had so many layers of paint, I thought it'd be worth a shot to soak it in lacquer thinner real light and see if it took anything off, and sure enough, it did. However, it did not touch the Bondo, which... Um, is okay because that Harbor Freight tool I got was actually working really well. It was just creating so much dust. I thought it'd be worth a shot to go this route. We're using, I think it's 180 grit is the abrasive wheel that's on it. It's the most aggressive one they sell and it's it came with the tool. And it did a really good job. Rust, it took it off so much better than I would have expected. There was just so many layers of paint and Bondo on these things. The, the top of the rail, the side that kind of angles out similar to what we're going to do with the tailgate right here the whole thing was covered in a quarter inch of bondo which didn't make any sense because they're only like two or three dents and they weren't across the entire thing and yet they put i mean that's probably a quarter gallon of bondo just on that rail luckily this like i'm not we're not sponsored by harbor freight but this thing really did put in some work it did great it was way faster than sanding it was way faster than the angle grinder it did exactly what it was supposed to do so Pretty, pretty impressed with that. All right, so uh, that unexpectedly took basically an entire day. At one point in time, I thought, okay, this is taking too long. So I got the flap disc and um, that thing actually, like, you know how aggressive those are. That thing murders compared to that as far as getting rust off. That actually, that's Harbor Freight not sponsored genuinely impressed i was pushing on that thing it was getting hot and it's still kicking so highly recommend that not sponsored yet this is probably actually the worst of it where the rust really pitted the metal my concern is the tailgate itself had a lot of bondo and it was hiding a lot of uh just like blah, 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 blah. well you can see it right there plain as day on camera look at that because i don't want to slap the exact same amount of bondo that was on there on here again. I don't know exactly what uh, path I want to take. I have an idea. It's probably not the right way to do it, but it is what I would do if it was my own. But we will see if we uh, venture into that. That dust is now officially everywhere. All right, moment of truth. It's wild how much distance that took off from the appearance of it, right? The top stayed the same length, but just the bottom being in more makes the bed look a lot shorter than it did previously. I do like it, actually. It's not, it's, I think we're just on the cusp of it being too much. You could still very easily read Chevy. It's not, it's not tapered in too much. It is also nice that the bed is silver. When I welded that support bar on, the bottoms weren't flat, so it's a little wet. But this is just to throw it on there, see what we got. So what you guys think? You like that? You don't like that? From right, from right here, I like it a lot. 
come out of your hole. I hope that wasn't important. I don't know what you mean. You might be complimenting an accident. Right here. Oh. Uh, papers out. Oh. Uh, so then, what I'm wondering, do we keep? Yeah, besides, that's what I was trying to think. Yeah, because I kind of like it, and it's hard to picture what it looked like without. And so it begins for you. What will just be a few minutes, but for us, it took days. This is the part of these builds that I absolutely love and absolutely hate. This is where I try to take what is in my brain and make it real, which, as romantic as that sounds, it's not. This is where I just cut metal, attack it in place, and then cut it off and throw it away because I decided I hate that idea. If you guys remember the front end of the bug, that whole hood area thing is made up of one hood, two fenders, two pieces from a rear apron, two pieces from a deck lid, and sheet metal. If you told me or asked me how did you do that, I have no idea. I just sat down and cut metal, held it in place, and go... Oh, that looks good. Or I cut it off because I said that looks terrible. That's basically what we're trying to do here. I don't think you can call this a skid plate because it's plastic, but technically this is a skid plate from a 2018 Chevy Colorado. If you hold it upside down, it has a nice little swoosh to it. Kind of looks like a roll pan for a truck. So we thought, oh my gosh, this might be perfect. Turns out wasn't perfect, didn't line up. However, seeing it on the truck like this led us to the idea that we ended up going with. Me and Zach basically just curved a piece of metal, made some brackets for it, and made kind of a roll pan. Super simple, completely different than my original idea for this. I was going to do this giant diffuser, and everything that we kind of mocked up was just looking too chaotic. So we went this route, and it actually looks pretty sweet. you learning the lingo bueno zach started going to town with the cardboard he made the templates for the side of the roll pan and he started cutting out some diffuser type aerodynamic fins we like them we cut them out of metal we just don't know if they're going to flow with what we have now accomplished so that is to be decided meanwhile i was cutting up some old brackets that were used to mount the air tank in the bed of the truck and we're going to use them to mount the truck bed to the frame those bars that I bent, that was 90% for aesthetic reasons. I just thought they looked cool, but it turns out they're going to make a really good anchoring point to mount the bed to the frame. Remember that one time at band camp when I told you about cutting metal, holding it in place, tacking it, and then cutting it off because we hate it? That's basically the last 25 minutes of this video that I cut out for you. You're welcome. What we ended up going with was a combination of Dennis, Manny, and Zach's idea for the taillights. They all had a really similar idea with like a triangle configuration. I thought it was difficult getting my ideas out of my head. Try combining three and a half brains and getting that idea out on paper. We cut it out of cardboard. We taped it up. We held it. We liked it. But we were all in agreement that like we don't know how it's going to look until we make it. So I started cutting things, which is my favorite thing to do. But I was cutting stuff that I didn't think I was going to cut. sparks okay i want this video to be excellent i don't care if it gets in your eyes i want you right here i want your head right here <laughs> we do not have insurance nor are you employed therefore if we did you don't have it. So a portion of this taillight idea is basically tracing the sides of the bed with flat stock. Flat stock, as the name goes, is flat. And the top of this bed rail here looked like roadkill and silly putty had a baby and it was left out to dry in the sun and then someone came up and stomped on it for no good reason. So naturally, we had to cut this out and replace it with a flat piece so when the flat stock met up with the flat piece of metal, it looked flat.
Okay, you kind of got to use your imagination on this, but I think the concept is there, and I'm quite happy with it. But I'm giving you a forewarning. There will not be this much red. I'll just flip you around. So, oh, wait. I want to get this point across before I show you what I did. This truck is a giveaway vehicle for you guys for free. Gum Out is having us build this, and all you have to do is sign up for it. There is nothing to purchase, and they're doing monthly giveaways every month. So this month, they're doing a Rain-X bundle, okay? Every month, you can enter to win, and every month, they're picking someone, and they're giving a bundle of some kind of way, okay? T-shirts, posters, product, they're doing it every month, and that's how you increase your odds of winning is signing up every single month, and it's free. You guys know, if you're on Instagram, you know there's 10,000 people giving 10,000 things away right now, and not a single one of them are free. There's a 29 times bonus points to the moon times 50 entered by my $70 t-shirt. The last thing I want to touch base on before I show you this, this is, I kind of, we're, we're technically behind, I think, personally. And I kind of expected this because when I did the bug and I did the Jeep, the part that took the longest, the part that just soaked up time, was staring at it and trying to decide what we want. And I'm not like, I'm very visual and I can't draw things out. I have to like make them and then look at them and then decide if I wanna scrap it or not. And so that's what takes so much time. The only part that's gonna take this amount of time again is going to be the front end. And this might be blasphemous to do this, but I really like the Ford, I don't know what that is. That's what was on there. But I like the Ford grills that are shaped like that. I don't mind that, but I like that more. I like the, the stubby, aggressive front, just like, Ugh. I think Jeremy Clarkson was describing an STI in some Top Gear, and he was describing the hood scoop, and he said the hood scoop makes the car look like, uh, he said like, me, you, outside, like, at a, like a bar fight. Like, I, I want that aggressive, like, hmm, but not this ugly, if that makes sense. Basically, I haven't had a direction in where I wanna go until now so with the front end we got to figure out the direction i want to go and then from there it's game on the front end is the last thing that i'm questioning where i want it to to lead and so back here while it's not completely finished i know everything that i want to do to it that's not finished which has been like me and zach literally sat in these chairs one day for probably a grand total like throughout the day it was probably three hours because we were just staring at this looking at stuff on the internet, staring at this, trying something, didn't work. And it just sucks so much time, but it's part of it. Okay, let me show you what we did. Let me paint you a picture here. That's too much red. The idea in my brain is that the outside edges are gonna be LEDs and the middle is gonna be black. So there's gonna be very little, it's gonna make that look smaller. It's gonna make it look a little less obnoxious because it's gonna be black, it's gonna blend, it's gonna just look like part of the truck, and then just on the outside is gonna be the LED strip. I, personally, love it. Um, these side pieces flow in really nicely. From back here, I mean, I think it looks pretty natural, it kinda ties in with what we got going on there. This little diffuser deal, okay? From this angle, you'll notice that it's basically a giant parachute. Okay, so what, what we've brainstormed in our noggins is center exit, possibly, or side and side exit. And then along the whole bottom, or at least in two large chunks, we're gonna cut a really, uh, probably like an inch and a half inch, uh, like oval across the whole thing. And that will alleviate that uh, pressure. We may also, uh, shoot something up to kind of not make a wind dam, but that's neither here nor there. So here's what we did. Repurpose the old taillight mounts as bed mounts. We still have to add one more mount to basically go from here to here because the back of this bed is a little, I mean, that's actually pretty good, but more support. Battery, air box, air box, or rather air tank, air tank, or air tank. I don't know where or how many we want to do. We only have those two bags I don't think we're doing bags up front, so we might just put the air tank here. We're gonna make a fuel cell in the exact shape of that square. It's gonna sit on top. I asked you guys on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, I asked you guys what, uh, if you wanted an exposed bed or if you wanted a wood bed. It was pretty dang 50-50, and here's, or rather like 
covered bed or exposed, but I said wood, but you know, you guys all brainstorm with me. So here's, here's the train of thought. Fuel cell covers that whole middle section. We'll do some cool, nice sheet metal on the edges there. And then from here, it's only gonna be four inches tall. And then from here to here, I'm gonna order a piece of carbon fiber that will uh, lift up. So that'll be kind of exposed, but like tidied up. Um, not really gonna be very useful as a truck bed. I mean, that it's, it's not what the vehicle is. And I really like that idea. And a lot of you guys were kind of on board with that train of thought. So that's what we're gonna do. So we got some mounts there. We got those welded in, still got to weld the center. We got these guys on, tailgate tilted. I'm liking it. You know, if you take just a little bit of that red away, right? Just kind of make it a, a sliver. Use your imagination. I think that's gonna look sick. Um, we have a lot of like trimming and tidying to do with fitment and uh, you know the edges and stuff like that. But that's the general idea of what we're going for. The only other thing that I'm debating in my brain back here is this. Uh, I wanna cover that. I don't know if when we cover that, if we're gonna keep that. I do like how that looked when it was just flat as opposed to having these there. So that is undecided. But that's also not going to, I'm going to basically flip a coin on that, I think. Uh, floors, you'll notice, are still exactly where we left them. Because the seat, the bench that came out of the Mini Cooper S10 truck is right there. Manny is going to basically cut the center of that to clear the hump. And then he's going to add foam to the sides and basically make like a bench bucket seat. So it'll have kind of the, the space, and the, the room and the leg room and kind of the 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 not pinching you aspect of a bench seat, you know, we're not all the same size. So in case you're a large human, uh, you'll have kind of that leeway going on, but it'll still kind of have the side to side support that you would want if you get rowdy and something like this. Uh, so I say all that to say, we haven't touched the floor yet because where that is gonna mount, I want to weld a much thicker plate below it where we're gonna actually mount it as opposed to just mounting that to sheet metal because there's a good chance that uh, should something happen, even if you're drifting it around, there's a good chance like it would just go right off there. Guys, it's free to enter to win. I have no idea why anyone would not. You need an email, you need to prove you're a human, and I think, unfortunately, you gotta be in the US of A. Uh, this just, you know, we can't, we can't ship a car to Norway, unfortunately. Link is in the description. It's on the freaking screen. You guys can have this thing, it's gonna be cool. I know we take a long time, it seems, on most projects, but it's hard to argue that the Jeep, oh, you haven't seen the Jeep yet. The Jeep runs and drives, and it's, it's the bug. The bug turned out pretty good, all things considered. I'm proud of both of them. So have just a little bit of faith that we're gonna make this look incredible because I think we are heading in the right direction. That's all I got for you for this video. Thank you guys for watching. We will see you very soon.